So I'm gonna get started tonight, and this is this is gonna be very important for the days ahead. Many many people wonder, how can I pray? What is the right way to pray? How can I hear God's voice? Uh, what is pleasing to God? Do I am I praying the right way? And many are wondering, how do I pray? And what is the correct way? And it's a very valid question because you know we're not taught that much. Even the disciples didn't know when they came to Yeshua. They came to Jesus and asked him, teach us how to pray. And he told them how to pray, but it's very hard for people to understand if it's not in the spirit. We cannot pray without knowing God's word. And we cannot pray if we're not walking in the spirit. We cannot pray if we are not dead to ourselves. We, if we don't know God's word, we, do, we cannot be pleasing to God no matter what. We can, somebody can try to teach us um, they can try to tell you to repeat this prayer. These repeating the prayers are, that is coming from so many pastors today is not of God. It, because it's, it's just man's ma a man-made method to prayer, just as Jews even do today, as they do did back then, as Christians do today, as they've done way back in the Catholic times. They made up prayers. And that it, they, that is human tradition, that is human origin that is not from the spirit of god that is not from his heart that is not birthed from anguish that is not birthed from the love of his word so what i'm going to get to tonight i'm going to teach you i and i pray this way this will probably help you so that you'll draw closer we need to know how to pray in these days ahead because if we don't we're not we're not going to make it we're not going to have a have a a leg to stand on we're not going to have a foundation there's not going to be any root now this is something people don't want you talk about prayer you're going to have hardly have anybody look, look how many people are here right now you talk about end times and revelations everybody's coming you talk about prayer hardly anybody's coming why because nobody loves god okay i can't say nobody a majority a majority they don't want a prayer. That's why, you want to see how popular your pastor is? Go Sunday morning or Saturday morning, either one. You want to see how popular your church is? Go that night. They just done away with that, actually. You want to see how popular God is? Go to the prayer meetings. The prayer meetings are silent anymore. I know a guy, his prayer meetings, none. There was, it started out with more than 10 people and it dropped down to two. There's even more than that. Now you can hardly, you can't even get one, so they had to cancel the means because nobody's coming. And people say they love God. You don't love God, you love the devil. If you can't pray, you don't know God. If you, uh, here's the thing. Okay, I'm toning it down. No matter how, people say today, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Daniel in Babylon prayed three times a day even though he was serving the king. Three times a day. You know what we do in our household? We have Bibles in every room. We have Bibles in every room. We have, it's, it, it's in bathrooms. You go to bathrooms, there's Bibles in the bathrooms and most, most places throughout our house, there's Bibles. Why? Because we want to be filled with the word. It's not just because of legalism, because we want to keep our minds on God. It is easy to get distracted as humans. It's easy to pick up your phone and start playing on it, right? Um, you know, if people say, I don't have time, I got kids, I got, I got a house to take care of, I got a job and things. I get it, I get it. But you can turn off your TV. You can stop talking with friends. You can stop talking with family on the phone and going to hang out with the, your friends and family all the time. You see what I'm saying? If you really want to, want to spend time with God, you'll make time for what is important in your life and what is important to you you'll set aside the time you'll make an effort it's interesting people will make time to plan a vacation they'll make time to make sure that that family can watch their kids they'll make take time to make sure and do something when the kids are asleep they'll take time to make sure and do something fun for themselves but where's God in the mix if we love God, we'll make time for what is important in our lives. And it's not a question of what. We all have the same amount of time in our life. We all have the same amount of minutes. What do we do with our time? 
say, but those people have less time than me. There's people that are more busy than you and I, and they have a lot more time in prayer, a lot more time in reading. Again, prayer is more important a lot of times than reading, but if you don't know the word, you don't know how to pray. And if you don't love the word and cherish it, you aren't going to know how to pray. So here we go. You pray what God has done in your life. Asaf, Asaf knew that in Psalm 77. He knew that. David knew that in Psalm 78. What did they pray? They knew how to glorify God's name. They knew how to worship him in spirit and truth. They knew know how to praise him. It's not just songs, guys. Yes, Psalms is a bunch, it's a bunch of songs, but is glorifying him by what he has done in 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 from the beginning to the end. You glorify his name. So I'm gonna break down a lot more so that we know truly what is pleasing to God and what is true prayer. Let's go to Luke. Just bear with me. This is gonna get this is gonna get very important. I, I know this is important because God has put it so heavy on me. Let's go to Luke 1. Or eight, Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then Yeshua told him a parable. Show that they should always pray and not be discouraged. He said, there was a judge in a certain city who never feared God nor respected people. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my opponent. What does that mean? I'll give it a minute. He was unwilling at the time. But afterward, he said to himself, although I don't fear God or respect people, yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I'll give her justice so that she won't wear me out by her incessant coming. Look what she said, the perseverance. This woman kept crying out to God, kept seeking, keep seeking, keep seeking. Meanwhile, what was the opponent doing? He didn't fear God and he didn't respect people. He didn't love people, he didn't love God. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge is saying. Won't God do justice for his chosen ones? Look at that, his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will quickly give them justice. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Isn't that powerful? Do you see that? What, what is he saying? Faith. Will he find faith in that context that is crying out to him day and night, that is seeking him earnestly, that is crying out in desperation to him? That is earnestly, fervently persevering and knocking, saying, God, open up. I want to know you. I want to draw close to you. These are the ones he's coming for. These are the ones patiently waiting. Will he find earth on faith on, on the earth when he returns? Just opened up a whole nother can of worms for you all, didn't it? You, many read that verse and they're like, I, I get this. I get, keep, now here we go. Let's go to Revelation, guys. You're like, how does that have to do with prayer? Look at here. <laughs> Revelation 4. Let's go to Revelation 4, 8 through 11. Look what he says. The four living creatures, each, have, each having six wings, were full of eyes all around and within. They do not rest day or night chanting. Look at that. What does that mean, don't rest day or night? He was telling the disciples, get up and pray. Don't rest day or night. What does that mean? It's not that, that oh, they never slept. This, this, this is what, what he's saying to you. You're going to sleep. You're fleshly still, right? But he's saying, don't stop sleeping, seeking God and worshiping him. Look what he's saying. Look what they say. Chanting, kadosh, kadosh. Holy, holy, holy. Adonai, aloha, zavayo. Look what he says. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts who was and who is and who is to come. Who was and is and who is to come. And look what they said. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor, look at here, glory and honor, we're going to see this trend a lot. And thanks to the one seated on the throne who lives forever and ever. And the 24 elders fall down and before the one seated on the throne and worship him. Worship him who lives forever and ever. What is worship, guys? Worship is your devotion. It's your honor. It's your praise. Where your heart, soul, and mind is. That's where your worship is. It's not just with hands lifted in a church, guys. That is not worshiping God. Worship is by your lips, by praising the glory of his name. Look what he says. And they throw their crowns down before the throne, chanting, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. Glory, honor, power. For the created, you created all things. Look. They're glorifying him because he created all things. And because of your will, look at here, your will, 
God, your will, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will, not your, not your will, not my will, his will. Look what he says. They existed and were created. Your will, because of your will, they existed and created. His will, from the creation, from the beginning to the end, this is what we're glorifying. Now let's get deeper. Revelation 5.12, look what he says. Look what they say here. They were chanting with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who is slain to receive power and riches. He receives riches. He receives riches. So why don't you give riches to him instead of asking for riches? Look what he says. Your power, God, your power. Let your name be glorified and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Look at that. And wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. You're asking for blessings when you should be blessing him. If you can't pray, you, you don't, I'm telling you, you don't know his word. You're not dead to self. You're disgusting to God. You cannot be pleasing, period. So look what he says. Let's go to four, all the way 12 through 14, 5, 12 through 14, Revelation. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under earth and on the sea and everything in them responding to the one seated on the throne, to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and power forever and ever. You see this. And the four living creatures kept saying, amen, 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 right? And the elders fell down and worshiped, fell down and worshiped. Look at this. So let's go to Revelation 7, 9 through 15. Look what he says. It says right here, he says, after these things, I looked and behold, a vast multitude and no one could count from every nation, all tribes and peoples and the tongues was standing before the throne and before the lamb. And they were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and along with the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their face to before the throne and worshiped God, worshiping him, worshiping him. If you can't worship him now, you cannot expect to live in eternity with him forever, period. If you're worshiping this world, you will not spend eternity with God. You will live in hell forever and ever, desiring the things that your eyes want in this world and never find the rest of your soul. Pay attention. God never tells you to pray in the Old Testament. Never. Because it's a relationship. It's a choice. You tell me where he tells you to pray. Look what he says. They say, fell down and worship God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Look what the people do at Thanksgiving even. They say, God, thank you for, thank you for this house. Thank you for the job. Thank you for prospering. Thank you for this big food, that buffet, the stuff your bellies. But you don't glorify God for his glory, his riches, his, his honor, his praise, his name being glorified, doing his will, that his will has come, been set forth from the beginning to the end. And now you got to pray to seek out his will for your life so that you fulfill his kingdom in heaven that is coming on earth. This is what we're praying for, guys. Look what they said. Then one of the elders saying to me, who are these dressed in white robes and where do they come from? I said to him, sir, you know. They said to them, me, these are the ones coming into great tribulation. Who caught this? The tribulation is now. But, but, what, but brother, where are we in the timeline in Revelation? Why you're counting, he's going to come back. While you're trying to figure out, guys, you don't know where he can come back at any moment while you're people are saying, oh, he's going to come back in 2028. He's going to come back in 2024. He's going to come back. You don't know when he's coming. You're a false prophet. These that came out of great tribulation, they worship him, praise him. They're crying out to him day and night. They're falling down on their face and worshiping him. They're fervently waiting like the woman. Say, God, give us justice, give us justice, give us deliverance. These are the ones that he's hearing. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his temple. The one seated on the throne will shelter them. Look at that. They'll never go hungry or thirst anymore. Look at that. Look at that. Now, we're going to get even, we're going to go more. This is going to get. Guys, you're going to know how to worship. You're going to know how to praise God. You're going to know how to give him glory. 
You're going to know how to pray to him after this. And I, I believe this. I trust in it. God is good. Let's glorify his name, everybody. Let's glorify his name. Now, let's go to... Um, let's go to uh, Colossians. Colossians 1, 5 through 11. He says right here, Colossians 1, 5 through 11. He says... Because of the hope stored up in you in heaven, you heard before this hope in the true message of the good news that has come to you in all the world. This good news is bearing fruit and growing just as it is in you since you first heard it and came to truly know God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dearly beloved fellow slave who is faithful servant of Messiah on our behalf. He also made clear to us your love in the rock, the spirit of God. For this reason also, ever since we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. See, praying for one another. We keep asking God that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. The knowledge of his will. Guys, it's not knowledge that man can give you. It's the knowledge of his will. This is what we're seeking. God, your heart. I need to know your will. Look what he says. This is knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Understanding is the knowledge applied. It's walking out his word. That's the true understanding and the wisdom applied, guys. This is what it means. To walk in a manner worthy of God, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. We pray that you may be strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might. For you have all kinds of patience and steadfastness with joy. See what he says? You have joy because you do these things. You're seeking his will. Let's go to John 17. Look what he says. John 17, 20. I pray not on behalf of these only, but also for those who believe in me through their message. (laughs) That they may all be one in verse 21. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you so that they may be one with us so the world may believe that you sent me. Now look at this. He's speaking of unity. So where there is division and not true unity and love and brothers and sisters, where there's not marriages being restored, where there's not families being restored, why are you following it? I see many going along following these singles that are completely, uh, guys, I'm not, don't, don't, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. The singles that are are rebellious, that have hate in their heart, they don't care to bring the unity. They can't keep a marriage. They can't keep a relationship because they're all broken because they're domineering. They're controlling. They want power over men and authority and control in this life. They're feminists. I'm talking about women and even men. They scoff and mock or anything that is true. And you people follow these people. They're the ones that, again, I, there's many women today. They're wanting to become host weddings and, and be, be the, the chaplain at weddings. They want to they want to give they want to have control over a church. They want to be prophetic over a church and speak prophecies over the church. They want to be the ones teaching and preaching and speaking words and yelling. Guys, this is not what God has ordained. And if, if you support that, you're right in this hell with them. Jezebel and Eve Man, there's a lot of men like you too. You're not gentle. You don't love. You don't truly love. Again, I'm not. I'm. We're not going to go there right now. We're not going to go there another day. We need to gather with those that are truly in unity with God. That is praying for for His name to be glorified. It's not our belly. Too many serve their belly. They're serving their belly and not the not the holy God and His holy kingdom. So look what he says, Matthew, uh, let's go to Matthew 6, 5 through 24. Look what he says. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Amen. I tell you, they have their full reward in full. But you, when you pray, go in your your inner room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret shall reward you. And what is he saying? When you pray, you don't do, you're not praying to be seen. You know in your heart if it is, if your heart is not set on God, if it's just an elaborate prayer like is done in many churches today. In synagogues, they have an elaborate prayer in order to 
It's it, but they have a boastful heart. It's not truly for God. It's it's so that people will will basically praise him and make it. They's like it, people afterwards are done. They're like great prayer, great prayer. Stop. Look what he says. Look what he says. And when you are praying, do not babble on in like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many prayers. Why do they know that? Why, why do you say that? Because people were babbling on thinking they can change God's mind by pre- speaking the same words, babbling and babbling and babbling, just ranting and ranting and ranting, thinking they can change it. So if you're wanting a house, you're just ranting and babbling, saying, God, I just know you're going to give me a house. Like, God, give me a house. They're like, I pray for a house that you bless me, that you bless me. You see, they keep mumbling and rambling and rambling. It's not, don't get it mistaken for fervent prayer. Fervent prayer is earnestly seeking God's face, not babbling and thinking you can change his mind. You, you just, you put it out there. By faith, you believe. By faith, you believe and it's going to happen. And when you are praying, do not, okay, do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. See, he's saying, he knows what you need. You don't need to keep babbling and asking him over and over for the same thing. Okay. Therefore, pray it on this way. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. There's the will. Your will, God. Not our will, not my will, not your will. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we've forgiven our debtors. Forgiving one another. Your prayers cannot be heard if you cannot forgive. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What happens if you fall into temptation? And, and you fall, if you're tempted and you fall into sin, you, God can't hear your prayers. Your prayers are going to be rejected because it's, it's unfragrant incense. It's unpleasing. Look what he says. For if you forgive, for if you forgive their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. And wherever you fast, do not become sad faced like the hypocrites, for they neglect their faces to make their fasting evident to men. Amen, I tell you, they already have their, they have their reward in full. Look, it's people that fast and they make it known. And churches a day even do this. They'll have let's, have, let's do a week of fasting. And they make it known that they're doing this. Just be humble about it. You don't need to announce it. I mean, you can tell a close friend if you want sometimes, but you don't need to announce them to everybody and let it be known. But when, look what he says, and when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that your fasting won't be evident to men, but to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. He's saying, he's teaching you humility, contrite, humble spirit. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. He's saying you can't love money or it's you can't, you can't, your prayers won't be heard either. He's, he's saying you can't serve him. Destroy and worth these break in and steal, but store up your treasure, yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where neither thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He's saying, where's your heart? In the world or his kingdom? Look what he says. The eye is the lamp of the body. Therefore, if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? That's Remember I, I said long ago, I, I, I mentioned how you can see lust in people's eyes for the world. That's what I'm talking about. It's a darkness. It's not light. So how can somebody that has a lust for the things in the world and the world be pleasing to God because there's no light in them. It's darkness. No matter how much they say, I love Jesus. So guys, ladies, pay attention. When you're talking, even when you're talking to men or a significant other or a woman, and they're all they want to talk about is things in the world. But when it comes to God, they can hardly talk about it. They're not Christian. They're not of God, no matter how much they, they appear to be holy. Look what he says. No one can serve two masters, for either they will hate one and love the other, or he'll stick by one and look down on the other. You cannot serve God in money. You can't serve God in the world, period. It's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Be like, where where do I draw a line? Where do I draw a line? We got to work, but many people that say that, if they have to say that, if we don't work, we don't eat. If you have to say that, then you're already rebellious. You're picking verses out of the Bible that somebody has already indoctrinated you with a highlighter, and read in your, your church because your heart has gone after a pastor just like yours, as God said would happen in the last days, and you just follow what they follow. 
and you follow the prayers they follow. They have the heart and the mind and the things that they desire. You have the lust of their eyes and the desires of their flesh. So you're, you are fleshly rather than the spirit of God. Look what he says. Let's go to, let's go to Matthew 6. Uh, Matthew 6, 7, he says, when you pray, don't babble on like the pagans do, right? So Daniel, let's go to Daniel. Look what he says in Daniel 6, 7 through 12. Look what he says. So these supervisors and satraps went into the king as a group and said to him, King Darius, live forever. All the supervisors of the realm and the magistrates and the satraps, ministers and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce a decree that anyone who prays to any god or man for 30 days other than you, O king, will be cast into the lion's den. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm teaching you guys, this is perseverance again. This is faith. This is trust. You got to know how to pray. You're going to know how to pray. I'm going to teach you more in just a minute. You're going to see even more what prayer truly is. <laughs> Look what he says. Now, O king, issue the decree and put it in writing. Put it in the writing. So that it may be not be altered according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. Look, it's the law to man rather than the law of God. Remember, one of, the, one of the animals that rose up in Revelation was the same spirit of Nebuchadnezzar, of this spirit, the Medes and the Persian. Remember, the idols they served was, was a spiritual meaning. Not, even though it was physical, there was a spiritual aspect of why they served these things, which cannot be repealed. Thereupon, King Darius issued the written decree. Now, when Daniel learned what was written decree had been issued, he went into his house. Look what he says. Went to his house where the windows in his upper room opened toward Jerusalem. Three times he belt, knelt down and prayed and gave thanks before his God just as he did before. Just as he did before. He didn't change. Man changed. Daniel did not change. Even when he was at a power and authority with the king and serving the government. He went against the government because it went against God's laws. It went against God's ways. So they issued a decree according to man and not God's heart, not God's laws, not God's ways. So we don't bow down to man. We bow down to God. But if you don't know his laws, you don't know him. Then, look what he did. He prayed and gave thanks before his God, just as he did before. He prayed and gave thanks. See that? Let's go further. Then these men came as a group and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Look what they did. They threw him in the lion's den, right? Because he was praying. They found him. Make sure you're found praying and serving your God and not man. Look in 2022, look what happened. At dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. As he reached the lion's den, he cried out to Daniel with a voice of anguish. The king spoke out to Daniel saying, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve continually able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel spoke to the king. May the king live forever. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they haven't harmed me. Because I was found innocent before him, nor have I committed any crime against you, O king. Look, he's making it known. Don't commit a crime against the government. Don't commit a crime against the king. So what you do, you don't bow down and, and worship what is against God. You worship God. But then, look what he says. God will exalt you and his name will be glorified. God's name was glorified right there because of his perseverance of his, and his faith. Even to the point of death. Whether you live or die, you go to the point of death. This is what it means. He was even in the point of distress and affliction and death. He still endured by faith. Guys, when you don't have this word, when you don't have the word and you don't have anything else around you and you're alone, you're putting the lions, then you got to know that even when the lions are about to devour you, the enemies are about to devour you, you got to know the faith in God. What did he do? Went down and started praying. He got down his knees. He praised God. He thanked God. Thank God for what? Well, let's go further. We're going to get into thankful. We're going to get into this, what this means. And unfortunately today, there's a spirit of entitlement where everybody thinks they're entitled to everything. They want a quick drug, right? It's like snorting cocaine. I can't believe you just did that. 
Yeah, because it makes you feel good. You want a quick answer. So you type it up on your keyboard, on your computer, and you get a quick answer, and you think that's going to fill you. No, it's, it's like crumbs, guys. You're getting crumbs, and meanwhile, there's a full-course meal you could get, but you don't, you don't dig for treasure. You don't want it. You don't dig for treasure in order to, to buy that meal. I, I, just want, I just want a little morsel. Just, just give me Esau. It'd be like Esau sold his birthrights for a single meal because I wanted pleasure right there. He wanted pleasure, right? Look what he says. Let's go to 1 Kings, guys. 1 Kings. 1 Kings 18. 41 through 46. Look what Elijah did. Then Elijah said to Ahab, this is after he defeated the false prophets, right? This is what he immediately did after. This is amazing. This is amazing. 850 false prophets, one, Elijah was stood against them all because of the faith he had in God and God's name was glorified. Even look at what he prayed before he sacrificed. It was a glorify his name. If God's name is being glorified, he's going to show up. He's going to show up. And if you're not dead to self, you, you better you better die. I, I'm telling you, it's going to be a scary thing. God's going to show up and he's going to do many things. Look what he says. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there's a sound of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Look, he had faith even before he prayed. Look at this. Crouch on the ground and put his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up, looked, and said, there's nothing. Then he said, go back seven times. Why seven? Hmm. Port number in the Bible. And it was the seventh time that he said, look, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. <laughs> then he said, go up, say to Ahab, harness your chariots and go down before the rain stops you. And a little while the sky grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. Ahab mounted his robe and headed to Jezreel. Now the hand of Adonai was on Elijah, so he girded up his loins and outran Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He gave, he gave him power. He gave him power to endure, to run that distance. Look at that. Look at here. He gave him a special strength. Rain was coming. The blessing was coming. He was fervently praying. Look at that. Seven times he kept praying. It wasn't just rambling on and mumbling on. He, he was glorifying God in those moments. He was. He birthed. He birthed in prayer. Seven times he birthed in prayer. It's that anguish, guys. Look at here. Let's go to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles. First Chronicles 4. 9 through 10. Look what it says. Now Jabez. Now this is what's interesting. You ever heard the prayer of Jabez? How did they write a whole book? This is what's so wrong. You got men writing books. This is only like a, a, a couple a sentence that they wrote a whole book on the prayer of Jabez. No wonder Christianity is messed up. They wrote a whole book. God only wrote a sentence. Look. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Jabez saying, because I bore him with pain. She bore him with pain. So in birth, in pain, in anguish, all prayer is birth in anguish, in pain. It's going to go through suffering. You're going to go through hardships. Uh, they're not going to tell you that in church, right? Your grace, come upon me. And I don't know, the elaborate, it's sophisticated prayers that they love to pray. It doesn't do nothing. This is why we're in the condition today. That's why our enemies are winning. We don't know how to pray. And when we do pray, it's not pleasing to God because we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to serve Him. We don't know how to worship Him. We don't know how to praise Him. Our leaders can be to blame, but you can be to blame too. All of us can be. Look what he says. Jabez, in verse 10, called out to God of Israel saying, if only you would greatly bless me and enlarge my territory. Did you catch that? I'll get to it in just a minute. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I might not suffer pain. I did not granted what he asked. Keep me from harm that I must not suffer pain. What are you saying? Keep me from sin. Keep me from evil. 
so I may not suffer pain. Pain comes from, comes from sin, right? Again, when you're praying, your flesh is not always going to like what you're doing. The situations you're going through, might, it might be painful, but it's pleasing to your spirit if you endure it. Now look what he says, Jabez, that you would enlarge my territory. Enlarge a territory. It was for God's glory. God's glory. He wanted to expand Israel and God's people. That's what he was really praying. People catch that and it was like, it's praying for him. It was praying for God's people. Look here. Let's go to Matthew. This is what's going to get more interesting. Matthew 5. Okay. 5, 1 through 10. Look what he says. Now when Yeshua saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, Look, he's, he's teach. Teach. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, look, mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the humble, for they shall inherit the, key, the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You're hungering and thirsting for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. He's telling you the way. Blessed are the merciful, those that show mercy, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. You got to have a pure heart for they shall see God without, without a pure heart. What is pure? It's without spot or blemish, guys. Without your, your garments in revelation with white. They can't be spot or blemished. They can't have blood on it, guys. You have to be cleansed. You can't be a foolish virgin with blood on it. You got to be a pure virgin for God. Unstained and unblemished from uh, things of the world. If this was your, you for, guys, I'm not talking sexually. If you went off and you you did things in your past life, you're washed clean. You're given a good garments, garments of righteousness. You're cleansed. You're given righteousness, guys. You're made pure, so stay in it. Remain pure. Do not go back to your vomit. Don't go back to your old lifestyle. Stay running the race because you will see God, but don't be too comfortable saying, well, nothing, I, I'm already saved. I'm good. I'm good. No, you will see God if you keep enduring persevering you keep your heart pure blessed are the peacemakers the peacemakers but you be like but he said i can't come to bring division not peace what is he saying peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god truly speaking the peace of god when you speak yeshua you're not trying to bring division you're not trying to do that guys but you're doing god's word you're speaking his word so that people may have the peace of god the peacemakers you restore peace with your brothers and sisters if you can. As much as you can, you desire that. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness. And if you're pursuing righteousness, you will go through this. Uh, ladies and men, I'm going to tell you right now, there's many people out there, they're afraid of what their friends are going to think, what their family are going to think, because you're, you're afraid of being persecuted. You can't serve God if you're afraid of that. So stop trying to sugarcoat it. Your lifestyle, sugarcoat it and try to work around the truth. You're doing yourself more harm. You're doing them harm. You're not truly loving them. Who cares what they think? If they leave you, they're not meant to be your friends. If they leave you, are not meant to be your mother, your father, your brothers and sisters, but you don't hate them, love them. If they don't want to be your friends anymore, like what am I going to do to be alone? Maybe you should be alone. Maybe you'll find God more. Dig for treasure. In fact, those people may be keeping you from the kingdom. For righteousness, pursue righteousness, bless, no matter what, you're going to need to know this, guys. Look at this. Look what he's saying. <laughs> Blessed are those when people revile you and persecute and say all kinds of evil things against you. In verse 11, on account of me, rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is nothing new. <laughs> Praise God. Look what he says. Who mourn, who are in anguish. Who mourn, who are in anguish. Who are pure at heart. Who give mercy. Who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They want to be righteous. That are poor in spirit. They're not, 
They're not prideful in spirit. They're humble and contrite. God will show you his glory and his riches and his blessings. You'll worship him. You'll praise him. And you'll give him glory for everything he's done. You're going to speak in the spirit in a way you never have. I'm not speaking, guys. Speaking tongues. tongue. The little clicking lizard noises or whatever. Whatever noises they make. It's just weird. Sounds like some Spanish, but it's not Spanish. Pour it in spirit. There's things that where you sit in silence, guys. And ladies, you're going to sit in silence. You're, gonna, you're not going to have words to speak because the spirit is groaning too much in words that you know how to speak. Paul says this. You can't speak. Because so you sit there in silence. There's times I sit there in silence. My brothers and sisters, they sit in silence that are truly close to God. They sit there in silence. They have no words. What are they to pray for? Until you seek God, is, is for, seek to glorify God's name and his kingdom come, <sighs> until you seek to glorify his kingdom, his name, his riches, his glory, you cannot, you're not gonna, you're not gonna receive his presence, okay? You're just not. Let's go to Psalm 6. Psalm 6. Who he says, a prayer for mercy. Look what he says. It's two through five. Look what he says. Adonai, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, Adonai, for I am weak. Heal me, Adonai, for my bones are shuddering with fear, as is my soul. And you, Adonai, how long? Turn to me, Adonai, deliver my soul. Save me because of your mercy. He's letting him know his mercy. He's crying out for forgiveness, for restoration. He's crying out because he knows he's merciful. He knows his, his love and how gracious he is, but you, you got to be pure in heart. If you're not pure in heart, desiring righteousness and to be delivered and turned from your sins, you cannot find it. Look what he says. Let's go to Psalm 40. Psalm 40, he says, For the music director of Psalm of David, I patiently... I waited patiently for Adonai. See, he waited patiently. He bent down to me and heard my cry. He brought me up in my out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. And he set my feet on a rock. He made my steps firm. Look, he's glorifying for what he has done for him. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and trust in Adonai. Blessed is the one who has, puts his confidence in Adonai, who has not turned to the arrogant, who has not turned to the arrogant. This is what I was talking about earlier. It wasn't just about those that are single that are prideful and er You see what I'm saying? that hate authority, that, that want to domineer over men and take control over everyone. Uh, this is what I'm talking about, the arrogant. This is what he's saying. Who puts his confidence in I, who is not turned to the arrogant, nor those who fall into falsehood. Look what he says. Many things you have done. I deny my God, your plans are us for us are wonderful. There is none to be compared to you. If I were to speak and tell them, they would there would be too many to count. Sacrifice and, off, and offering you did not desire. My ears you ha have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, here I am. I have come in the scroll of, your, of a book. It is written about me. I did like to do your will, O God. Yes, your Torah is writ within my being. I proclaim good news of righteousness in a great assembly. Behold, I am not shutting my lips out and I, you know. I did not hide your righteousness within my heart. Did not hide the righteousness. He proclaimed it. He did not hide it, the light under a lamp. He let it be known. You don't hide your righteousness under a lamp. Rather, I declare your faithfulness. I'm going to tell you, if you're afraid of persecution for your friends and family right now and you can't speak the glory of his name and his righteousness, that if you can't start speaking and proclaiming it, you are going to make it because when persecution comes, you're gone. You're done. You're going to give it up. You're going to die to faith and try to preserve your life, but you're still going to die. Better go to death because of God's name than rather than denying his name. Rather, I declared your faithfulness and your salvation. Look, he said, I declared your right, your faithfulness and your salvation. I did not conceal your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. I did not, do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your mercy and your truth always protect me. Look what he's praying. For evils beyond numbers surround me. My sins have overtaken me. I cannot see. They are more than my hairs on my head and my heart fails me. I don't know. Please deliver me. This is a cry of anguish, guys. Deliver him. Deliver him. I don't know. Come quickly to help me. Let those who seek my life be to be swept away. Be put to shame and humility. Let those who wish me evil be turned back in disgrace. Let those who say to me, aha, aha. Remember I said, people say or was saying to me earlier, aha, aha. I won't fall away. Let those who say to me, 
Aha, uh -huh, uh, be appalled over their own shame. Let those who seek you and rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation continue to say, Adonai be magnified. Adonai be magnified. The Lord be magnified. But I am, I, I am poor and needy. Look, see, poor in spirit. Yet my heart, my Lord is mindful of me. You are my help, my deliverer. Oh, oh my God, do not delay. What is he saying? He's praying, he's glorifying him. He's let, this is what's amazing. Go back to Psalm 78, 77. They're glorifying God based on what he's done from beginning to end. If you don't know his word, you don't know what's pleasing. You gotta glorify God's name when you're praying. You gotta glorify his name, repeat his words, let him know what he's done. Not because it's legalism, but it has to be out of pure heart. If you are not walking in the spirit, dead to yourself, you aren't gonna be able to do this. If you're not blessing the spirit, if you're not everything in five, Matthew 5, 1 through 10, you're not going to do it. You're not going to see it. You're not going to get this. This is not to have any effect on you. It will not change you whatsoever. Remember, David, why is he a man after God's own heart? Because he didn't desire things in this world. He didn't want Saul's kingdoms and riches. He didn't want it. He was willing to hide and leave it all. He was willing to give it all to his own son, Absalom, when he's trying to kill him. Give all the kingdom and the riches. And, but he said, I would have given it to you. And he's dead. He, he ended up dying. Pride and arrogance leads to death. Evil leads to death. Jealousy and envy leads to death. These things lead to death. Look at there are people that died because of the sins that they committed in the past. It leads to death. And there is no awakening at the end of eternity. Only in hell. Not the kingdom. Not the everlasting life in the kingdom. Now look what he says. David, when he cheated, he tried to work his way around the Torah, right? He worked his way around the Torah. That's why he sent the man in the front lines. Because he thought, if the man's dead, then he can marry the woman. But he knowingly sent the man in the battle, knowing that he would die in the front lines so he could marry the man's wife. And guess what? There's consequences for that sin. There's always consequences to every sin. What you reap is what you sow. So go through it. Don't be mad at God. What you reap is what you sow. Righteousness or judgment. So pay attention to here. At the very end, even though David made mistakes at times, he repented. He cried out. He had a heart for God. He glorified his name. And at the end of his life, they, brought, they said they brought the most beautiful woman in all of Israel to basically be, sleep with him. What happened? He didn't sleep with her. There's a man that endured. The righteous will fall and stumble many times, right? But here's the thing. God has grace for those who turn and repent from their sins. You have to, you have, to have that humble and contrite spirit. You have to. Now look at here. Look what he says in Psalm 51. Hopefully this thing continues right here. Um, Psalm 51, 17. Look what he says. O oh Lord, look, deliver me from blood guilt, O oh God, God of my salvation in 16. Then my tongue will sing for joy of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips for, and I will declare your praise. For you would not delight in sacrifice, verse 18, or I would give it, nor be pleased by burnt offerings. The sacrifice God is, of God are a broken spirit, a, a, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Look at that. He will not despise it. This is, this is Matthew again. See, David knew the heart of God. He figured it out. He figured out what is truly praise and worshiping him. That's why he said, I will, he made a covenant with David. Your covenant is an everlasting covenant. I will never forsake it. People say the Jews don't matter. Then you don't matter. He made a covenant with David in his house forever and ever. And that stands. The Jews are not unworthy. Matthew, or go to Romans 9, 10, and 11. All of it. He says that even the Gentiles will become arrogant. You're supposed to be grafted into the olive tree. So you're part of the commonwealth of Israel. You're not separated from the root. You're now grafted in and now you're one with the Jews. You are now a Jew. This is what's supposed to be. There's not any, this is for the Gentiles. This is for the Jews. Are you in a different tree? You're in the Christmas tree or the olive tree? You tell me. You're praying to Baal called Lord or are you praying to Adonai, the God of heaven, the God of Israel? Tell me. Tell me. This is what's the problem with Christianity. There's a lot of people doing many things, 
They, they want the signs and wonders, but they don't want that Jewish stuff. No, that stuff we don't want. That's for, that's not for, that's, there's no power in that. Well, some may especially on Judaism, maybe not, right? But you need to know the true word of God. Broken and contrite, humble spirit, thirst for righteousness, hungering for it. Pure in heart, you'll see God. Look what he says. Let's go to Psalm. Best one of all. Anybody that, that reads this whole thing, this will, this will bring you to tears. Psalm 119, look at this. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the Torah of Adonai. Happy are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the a whole heart, who do no injustice, but walk in his ways. Notice it says your whole heart. Love him with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's what he says. You have commanded that your precepts be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways are steadfast to observe your decrees. Then I would not be ashamed. See, there's no shame or guilt. If you keep his decrees, if you keep his ways, you'll be free from it. That's what he came to do. Die for your sin, put his spirit in you. So you should be free from guilt and shame. Look what he says. When I consider all your mitzvot, I praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous judgments. Look at that. You can only praise with an upright heart. That's the only way to praise him. I will observe your statutes. Never abandon me utterly. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding his heart according to your word. That's how you keep it pure. By keeping his word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Let me not stray from your mitzvot. And this way he's praying. Don't let me stray from it. I've treasured your word in my heart. That's the treasure. His word is his treasure and very few that find it. He says when the man goes and finds the treasure, they'll go sell everything they own, get rid of everything, and go buy that precious pearl. That's his word. That's his word. Dig for that treasure. Remember I said it earlier. Look what he says. Look what he says right here. With my, Blessed are you, Adonai. Teach me your statutes. He's saying, blessed are you, God. Teach me your statutes with your lips. I rehearse all the rulings of your mouth. I rejoice in the way of your testimonies above the, uh, all wealth. His testimonies, his ways are more important above all wealth. Look at that. That's the treasure. Again, that says in Matthew, I will meditate on your precepts with your, regard your ways. I will delight in your decrees. I will not forget your word. Do good to your servant that I may live and keep your word. Look at that. Do good to me so that I keep your word. Open my eyes. Keep my eyes open so I may behold wonders from your Torah, your law. I am a temporary dweller on earth. See, he knew this. I'm a temporary dweller. This is not my home. Look at this. Do not hide your mitzvot from me. My soul is crushed with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud who are cursed, who wander from your mitzvot. Take scorn and contempt away from me, for I have kept your testimonies. Though princes sit and talk about me, your servants meditate on your decrees, for testimonies are my delight. Your word is my delight. They are my counselors. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me. According to your word, I told of my ways. You answered me. Teach me your statutes. Help me discern. Help me discern the way of your precepts so that I meditate on your wonders. That's the wonders. His precepts, his word, his laws, his wonders. My soul weeps with grief. Make me stand firm with your word. Turn me away from the deceitful way and be gracious to me with your Torah, your law. I've chosen the way of faithfulness. I've set my heart on your judgments. I cling to your testimonies. Adonai, do not put me to shame. I run the course of your mitzvot. You, for you, open wide my heart. Look at that. He's just, you can go on and read this and it's beautiful. A beautiful, this is how you pray. This is how you pray. I look over here. Look at the first Chronicles 16. David appointed Asaf, the kinsman, to give thanks to Adonai. Look what he prays. Give thanks to Adonai. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek Adonai rejoice. Those who seek Adonai, let them rejoice. Seek Adonai his, and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done. His signs and judgments of his mouth. His signs and wonders it comes from his mouth. That is his word, guys. People are so busy seeking signs and wonders from a man, a, a prophetic 
ministry or some prophet that gives you, <clears throat> excuse me, divination and some false sign and wonders that give you fortune telling rather than the signs and wonders of God's word. They want signs and wonders of, of, of hurricanes and natural disasters and things coming upon the earth rather than God's word. What did I say? The signs and wonders are from his word. You want the signs and wonders? The false prophets, guys. The devil himself, or he says in Revelation, the false prophets will show you signs and wonders to see many. Even possible to elect. But the signs and wonders is his word, what he's done in your life, how he's changed you. Look what he says. Remember, O descendants of Israel, his servant, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is Adonai, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever. The word that he commanded for a thousand generations that he made with Abraham. See, he's going back to the beginning. Swore to Isaac. He confirmed the decree with Jacob to Israel, an everlasting covenant. That everlasting covenant, the Jews still matter. Why? It's everlasting covenant. It can't be broken. Just as you see that rainbow in the sky, never flood the earth again, but he never promised to. He wanted to destroy the earth again. Saying to you, I give the land of Canaan as your allotted inheritance. When you are in few in number, very few, and the strangers in it, and wander from nation to nation, from kingdom to another, he allowed no one to oppress them. But for their sake, he reproved kings, touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Sing the Adonai all to earth. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. What are you doing when you're singing to him, proclaiming his salvation? That he's done and changed your life, the sin that he's delivered you from, right? So what does he say? declares wonderful his glory among the nations his wonderful his works among the, all the peoples for great is Adonai and greatly to be praised he is the feared above all gods for all the gods of the peoples are idols but Adonai made the heavens splendor and majesty are before him strength and joy are in his place ascribe to Adonai O families of the peoples ascribe to Adonai glory and strength ascribe to Adonai the glory due to his name Bring an offering and come before him. Worship Adonai in the splendor of holiness. His holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Look at that tremble. What a noise in church. There's no trembling. The word is firmly established when nobody wants to come to prayer meetings, but they want to come to, woo, grace, woo, party. When kids come back from church, and like, it was awesome, mom and dad. Great. Kid can go right to hell with you. Just set your kid up for hell. Free for playing. Ride to hell. Sad. <sighs> Tremble before him. All, and you wonder why your kids are going out sleeping with everybody and getting drunk when they hit college age. Mm. Sad. The world is firmly established. It will not be moved. He's letting it know. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let them say among the nations, Adonai reigns. Let the sea roar and all that, that is in it. That's why we're glorifying his name. You're saying, God let everything that it, it, all creation worship you let the rocks tremble let the trees bow down to you let the let the, the seas roar and, and obey your name because your name is holy your name is glorious god by your mouth you have created everything into existence by your word everything is true from the beginning to the end you're still in power god glorify your name God, let me glorify your name so that others may worship and praise you for your eternity, God. Let you get more numbers for your name that they, people will bow down and prostrate themselves in the ground and in the dust and praise and glorify your name. This is what it means to glorify God. This is what it means to strive. We're glorifying God's name, not us. Let the field rejoice. Look what he just said. And all that is in it. Then the trees of the forest will sing the joy before Adonai. For he comes to judge the earth. There even the trees are happy to judge the earth. Look at that. And there's all creation groans for his coming. That's why there's birthing pains. They obey God's voice. And when sin, it disrupts the all natural energy, not to get new age or whatever, the energy type, the ecosystem of the world. So we have tornadoes, we have earthquakes, we have hurricanes. These things are as a result of God's judgment. And people don't want to obey that. They say this is natural. It's not natural. Nothing is natural about disaster. Look what he says. Give thanks to Adonai for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Declare, save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name. That we may glory, glory in your praise. Blessed be Adonai, the God of Israel, for, 
from everlasting to everlasting, then all the people said amen and praise God and I. Look what here. We see 1 Kings 8, 22 through 61. I'm not going to read this. You can read it. 1 Kings 8, 22 through 61. Solomon prayed. His prayer is a long prayer. was pleasing to God. So pleasing that the spirit came. All the people were one in unity and the spirit came crashing down. Everybody hit the deck. It hit, they hit the deck. The glory came. This Boom, they hit the deck. In Acts 16, 25, Paul and Silas, they were say, sung songs and praised and prayed while in prison. They were singing, look at, they're singing songs. They're reading, probably singing from the Psalms. They're singing to God, his glory, his praise. What he has done, his glory, amazing his name is. How good is good compassion is grace is even when suffering. They're glorifying him. In the midst of trials and tribulations, he's praying, singing songs. Praised him and prayed. Then again, we see in Jonah 4, 2 through 3, Jonah recognized even though he was mad at God because the judgment that had come. But what happened? He told God, I'm mad because I know that you are a God of loving kindness and compassion that you relent your anger that you relent your judgment and if we turn as a corporate body he would relent his judgment but the fact is we're not so now he's going to preserve a remnant and judge the rest he'll deliver the remnant save the remnant i can't tell you you're going to be safe from death i can't promise that but you got to go with a sword or to to prison or whether captivity or until he comes it doesn't matter what's it to you What's it to whether anybody else it is? What's, everyone's trying to preserve their life rather than glorify God's name and fulfill his will. You got to see. Ooh, that splash my eye. Now, who's still with me? Upon hearing these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. I prayed and fasted before the God of heaven. Then I said, when the destruction happened, right? And fasted before the God of heaven. Then I said, Adonai, God in heaven. The great and awesome God and who, who keeps the covenant and the loving kindness with those who love him and keeps his mitzvot. Those who love him and keeps his mitzvot's commandments, guys. Please let your ear be attentive and, and your, your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I am praying before you. See, there's that reverence, guys. People are going to him in an instant, wanting an instant answer. And they get mad because they're not hearing because your heart is still in the world. Your heart is still on you. It's not this glorify his name. It's not to bring glory and honor and praise to him. It's not to truly worship him. It's doing it by your own method, your own praise and worship according to man. We have to come out of the world system. We've got to come out of man's system and truly seek him. Now let's go on. Look what he says. Before you today, both day and night, look, open your ear to prayer of your servant that I am praying before you today, both day and night, on behalf of your servants, the Benai Israel. I am confessing the sins of Benai Israel. Look, on everybody, when I pray, when the, the, the true men of God and women of God pray, they're, they're confessing the sins for everybody. You repent from yours, but you're confessing everybody. We all have sinned against you, God. We all have fallen short. Have mercy on us. Help us, God. That those are seeking you. Look, I'm confessing the sins of Benai Israel that we have sinned against you. Yes, I in my ancestral house. Look at that. I in my ancestral house have sinned. Stop pointing the finger. You have sinned too, so be contrite and humble. He says, we have acted very corruptly against you. We have not kept the mitzvot, the statutes, nor your rulings that you have commanded your servant Moses. Please recall the word. If you say, but, but that's the law of Moses. This is the law of God. It's his love letter. You, just like those notes you used to pass around in high school, middle school, elementary, whatever. You used to pass these notes around, right? Today, we just send texts, right? So, or snappy chats, whatever. TikTokies. I don't know, whatever it is. Facing Facebook, whatever it is. They're facing, these being his book. So, this is what I'm saying. But you, this, this is what I'm saying. He's... This is the heart of God. If you can't accept this, then you're not going to get it. If you act, if, 
Please recall the word that you have commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you act unfaithfully, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and obey my mitzvah and do them, then even if you're dispersed, the people are at the ends of the heavens. I will gather them from there. What is he doing when he's coming back for us? From the four corners of the earth, gathering the harvest. Those, he's gathering the harvest, the wheat from the tares. The tares don't bend. They don't bow. They're stubborn. They don't move with the wind. They can't move. The wheat does. It bows and worships and praises. It's humble. It's contrite. And it's fruitful. Bring them back to the place where I've chosen for my name to dwell. They are your servants and your people whom you redeem by your great strength and by your mighty hand. Please, my Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering. To remember God promised these things if God promised it and his word is true all these things have happened his word is true he's, he's faithful his grace is enduring it's forever but we got to be in his grace what is grace Titus 2 11 through 15 Titus 2 11 through 15 you want to write that down you want to mark that grace Titus 2 11 through 15 look what he says please my Lord let your ear be attentive to my prayer he's asking him please See, people will come to us, even our ministry, as, as they do anybody else. Why don't you answer me? Well, maybe because there's like thousands of people that follow our ministry all over the world. So what can we do? Just We can't give everybody the individual attention all the time. To answer a question, you got to seek it. You will. If, you, if you're actually listening to sound doctrine and enduring, you'll hear it from video from start to finish. It's explained, but you're not digging for treasure because... It's all written out there. It's all out there. It's going to show you we're teaching. But if you're not hungry, you're not going to see it. Then they'll be disrespectful and get mad at you. Well, you're, you're a burden to the body. You're, you're an enemy to the cross. Please, look what he's saying. Please, ha, have mercy. I don't have time to answer everybody. If I answered all the, the, the hundreds of emails, it would take all my time. I have no time with God. I have no time with my family. I can't answer every me email. People say, but brother, why don't I, I sent you emails. I can't check them all. We don't have the manpower to possibly check them all. I'm not the only one doing it. There's others doing it, but we don't have that manpower to do it. We don't. Prayer of your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name, reverence and awe, fearing your name. Look at this, revering. Give your servant success today and grant compassion in the presence of this man. Now I, the, I was a cupbearer of the king. He wanted to go restore the temple. The same way you should be wanting to restore the temple. This is what you're doing. God's will. He wants to say, let me go build a house for myself. Let me go build my own name. Let me try to glorify my name. Let me go build a business. No, he said, I'm going to go restore the temple. This means going out and doing the work of God. The great commission, fulfilling the great commission, going out into the field and gathering a harvest, planting seeds, guys. Planting where God says to plant so that a harvest will be pretty for when he returns. We see in Genesis 18, 16 through 33, Abraham prayed for Saddam. <laughs> Look at here. But I'm, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go there. If you want to read that, you're more than welcome to read that. I'm not going to go there right now. But I'm going to go over here to... Um, 1 John 5, 14 through 15. Look what he says. Now, this is the confidence we have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. His will, not yours. Not mine. Not theirs. Not the church. His will. His will. He hears us. See, did you catch that? And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request we have asked from him. And then he goes on to talking about his brother sinning. To, to, if you see your brother in sin, look at this. Gently warn them. Why? Because you, want, you don't want them to fall away from God and not be able to, His will. People use this a day for prosperity, for more gain on earth, and rather for the, his kingdom. Look at Exodus 32, 9 through 14. Moses prayed for the people. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights when they were sinning. That's the way your heart should be. That's the way you're, look at that. 
Luke, it, it was for the people, guys. It wasn't just the world. Remember, the world. There's always going to be war with the world. There's always going to be enemies in the world. But he's talking about, guys, look at this. He's talking about the people. Pray for the people, God's people. In Luke 6, 27 through 28, he prayed for the enemies. In James 4, 3, when you pray, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you spend what you get on your own pleasures. We don't receive because we want it for our own gain, ourselves, or our own pleasures, or our worldly lusts. Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He tells us again. He tells us the New Testament to pray, right? When he's here. Colossians 4, 2, because now we have the spirit, we know how to pray more. He's, he's telling us to pray. Well, how, the importance of it, he's teaching us. He was a teacher. That's why they called him Rabbi. He had 12 students that learn. Talmudim. Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Be careful. Be wise as a serpent, innocent of a dove. Serpents are wise. They can see the enemy coming. They can see the heat coming. They can see cold coming. They can see these things. They're wise. They're, they're smart. But innocent as a dove. Be gentle like a dove. Innocent, without spot or blemish. They're, doves are innocent. Look at this. I'm going to go to, uh, we're almost done here. We're almost done. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and everything gives thanks. For this is God's will for us in Messiah, Yeshua. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic messages, but test all things. Prophetic messages are revealing of his word. It should bring you to sin. It's not just telling the future, guys. That's the most, that's the smallest part of anything. It's already written. It's already written and God's going to reveal it to you. The only thing that, nothing I'm speaking is new, guys. It's nothing, anything anybody speaks is nothing new. It should be written. Fortunately, we have fortune tellers rather than God speaking his word. It should be bringing God's word to life, bringing you repentance from sin, delivering you from sin so that you'll be able to see God's word. Do not despise prophetic messages, but test all things. That's why when people come, they say, it's encouraging what you're speaking. What your ministry is speaking, it's encouraging. Why? Meanwhile, other people see it as judgment, especially those that are professing believers, messianic and Christians, pro professing believers. And they, they get mad. Not saying, oh, there's many people that are thankful, right? But... They, because they're despising the prophetic messages. They're not holding fast to what is good. Prophetic messages should be encouraging. It should build the body. That's what it is. Revealing God's word to the people. That's what it was to the prophets so that you come back and you walk on the narrow path. You're delivered from sin and, and, and hairs of righteousness. Keep away from every kind of evil. <laughs> In verse 23 here, now may the God of Shalom himself make you completely holy and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept complete, blameless at the coming of our Lord Yeshua and Messiah. Faithful is the one who calls you and he will make it happen. Look at that. He will make it happen. He's faithful. He's saying it. He's letting it known. Even in light his letters, he's speaking prayers. He's speaking prayers because he had a heart of prayer. He knew how to pray to God. <laughs> Luke 6, 12. Look at here. Luke 6, 12, look what he says. And it was during these days that Yeshua went out on the mountains to pray and he spent all night in prayer to God. <laughs> Guys, you, you, you just pray. He's praying all the time, day and night. He was teaching day and night. This is what he did. I can't, I'm not saying that every one of you are teachers, but it's not that hard. Guys, you can take care of kids, be rocking a baby and talking to God. Thank you for this child. Even if your baby's screaming, you're just like, uh, like you might be upset, right? You might be kind of annoyed, but you still love your kid, but you're still glorifying God. Pray. You're driving, pray. Talk. I'm not saying close your eyes. You can do it with your eyes open. You can shop through the store, getting groceries, and you can pray. Do it. it. This is how you talk to him. When you walk about, this goes back to Deuteronomy. Teach him to your kids. Talk about it constantly. Pray. These are the things when your, your mind is on the world and set on the world, pleasing friends, pleasing family, pleasing people around you, pleasing your job, pleasing everyone, consumed with worldly music or TV, 
These things, you, you will not have the mind of God. You will not hear from him. You, you can't. Your mind is not on God. Who he says Hebrews 4. Let's go to Hebrews 4. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing right through to the separation of soul and the spirit, joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. He will reveal it to you. No creature is hidden from him, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him who to whom must give an account. It's revealed. There is nothing that can be hidden. Nothing that can be hidden. Look what he says. Therefore, in verse 16, let us draw to the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help in time of need. So when you have temptation, when you're going through trials and tribulations, you will have grace. You will have the, 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 the mercy in order to endure. He will empower you through the Holy Spirit. He'll give you that strength that you need to endure until the end. But if you're sinning, he can't give it to you. You're wondering why you're stumbling because you're not, you're set on the world. Your mind is set in the world and the things in it rather than God in his kingdom. His will, not our own. Now, as a final thing, I'm going to go to Luke. And I know I've, I've read this so many times. And I'm going to re- say one more thing right after this. Luke 21, 36 through 38. Look what he says. But he tells us not to be carry, be caught up in cares and worries of this life or strong drink or weighed down with carousing or the worries of this life. And the day come on you suddenly like a trap, right? It will come rushing on the whole earth. But look what he says. But stay alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all the things about to happen and to stand before the Son of Man. He's saying to pray. Pray. So during the times Yeshua was teaching in the temple, but in nights he went out and stayed on the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives is basically... Stay alert, pray. We want to keep praying at all times. So we have this strength. We can't have strength without praying. We can't have strength without a pure heart. If we're caught up in the world and cares, worries of this life and everything, we can't make it, guys. We got to rest. We got to be at rest with him. He Gethsemane. Why did he go to the Mount of Olives? That's the Gethsemane, guys. That's where he went to pray. That's his quiet place. Now you go to Israel, it's loud. It's loud in that garden. You got horns beeping everywhere, yelling off in the distance. A bunch of tourists everywhere. Maybe not right now, but it's just it's it's busy, and you don't have that quietness anymore. But look what he says. And all the people would come early in the morning and hear him in the temple. So you come to hear his hear him speak. He's going to speak to you if you set your heart on him. You're going to hear him if that's what you set your heart on. To pray, we, we got to praise. We got to have the fear of God. We got to have reverence and awe. We got to be pure in heart, not double minded. We got to be humble and not prideful. Worship his name and seek his will. To glorify his name. Honor with your heart, honor him with your heart and not just your lips. Remember, honor is where your mind is. You are, where your mind is, if you love him, you're going to honor him. You're going to cherish his word. A heart of love and compassion and praising his word and his name and who he is. And if we do these things, God is going to reveal his self to us in such a mighty way that we cannot explain. Blessed are those who weep, who mourn, who are in anguish now. God is going to give us, reveal so much to us. His glory, His riches. We pray to Him to glorify His name. We worship Him in spirit and truth. You can't, guys, you, if you don't, there's people that say, I know truth, I know truth, but then you're bas- bashing There's no mercy or compassion. Like, you will not go. Guys, you can't even show mercy to your kids when they mess up at times. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. But we got to keep enduring. It's not an excuse. If we love somebody, we don't want to hurt them again. We don't want to keep hurting or bring pain in somebody's life if, if it goes. If it's. 
against God, right? If it hurts somebody, if it hurts other people, we're looking out to have mercy, have compassion. If we know truth, we'll know His Word, we'll know how to pray. And then those prayers, guys, nothing can be done without prayer. We can't walk with God without prayer. Prayer that's pleasing to God will be beautiful. It will glorify His name. You'll be, you'll be, His name will be exalted through you. And spirit and truth. Truth is not just knowing Torah and having this knowledge. That's not it. The spirit is the law written on your heart and your mind. It's it, if your heart and mind is not devoted to God in a reverence and awe, praising and worshiping Him in spirit and truth, you're not going to see it. The spirit can't work in you. You have to be humble and contrite. Go back to Matthew 5. Read the first chapter, the first verses right there. 1 through 11, just where it, read it. God's going to show you what he the way to the key to the kingdom. That's it. His law is spiritual, Romans 7. It's within us. We're going to walk it out in spirit and truth. He came full of grace and truth, spirit and truth. And that's what he put inside of us. So we'll be full of grace and truth. If we speak too much truth, it's going to kill people. If we speak too much grace, they're going to fall off. It has to be grace and truth, 100% on both. We have to walk in grace, fullness of grace and truth. We can't do it 100% perfectly, only he did. But we can try to set the aim. We can try to do it because... The closer we get to Him, the more humble we're going to be. The closer we get to Him, the more we're going to realize we don't know. The more closer we get to Him, the more we're going to want to love each other and bring unity and bring people closer to God. The more we're going to want to glorify His name. The more we're going to praise and worship Him on our face and knees and in prayer. This is what it means for the kingdom. The kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there is no disunity, there's no division in heaven. All division comes with people wanting to be right according to their fleshly ways. Rather than speaking God's word and leaving it right there, whether people want to receive it or not. Those who have ears, let them hear. Those who don't, they're, gonna, they're already ashes. He said it. So pray to him. Be at peace. The wilderness. Learn from his walk. Learn from his words. God is coming back and He's faithful. He is. I've seen so much what He's done. You gotta believe it, you gotta have faith because that's all you got. You gotta hear His word and endure the sound teaching. Without the sound teaching, remember people, the disciples sat there for three years listening to Him. Day and night, walking with Him. Day and night. What, do you, what does that represent? Day and night. Day and night, and they went all the way to their death. The end, those who endure to the end will be saved. That's what that means. You're saved by grace. You're justified by faith alone, guys, right? And sanctified in truth. And glorified at His coming. You have to know that you've been saved by His grace. That you're saved by His grace, and nothing can take that. But guys, but you can't go back to the world. you got to love His word. Pray. Cherish it. God's, that's the only hope we got. When he comes back, we got to be going through the sanctification process. Sanctification is righteousness. It's righteousness. Seeking his righteousness. Job sacrificed every day just in case of his sons or his daughter's sin or his wife or anybody else's sin. He sacrificed. So what does that mean? He was praying. He was serving God. He was seeking his face. He was crying out day, day and night. Even through the trials and tribulations, he still praise God. Even though he didn't like it in his flesh, none of us do. But at the end, we'll be beautiful. We'll be made as gold. We'll, we'll re know who he is. We'll see him for who he is. For when he appears, we'll be just like him. So let's give glory to God. Let's praise his name. And I pray that you know how to pray more and more. That you understand the depths of his heart and his grace and his truth. And you have, with all discernment and understanding and faith and perseverance to endure until the end, that you'll have the hope that you need to endure until the end. That you'll be strengthened by grace and, and sanctified by His truth. That you'll be endure until the end and know His riches, His blessings, His glory and His honor of His kingdom that is coming on earth right now in this body. We gotta know God's grace and we gotta know His love. We gotta know His truth. We have to know how to pray. And the more we desire Him with our heart, soul, and mind, the more 
we can truly bow down and worship Him and praise Him and know a prayer that is truly pleasing to Him. God bless and shalom to each one of you that received this.